Hello folks, hey hi there, Kagan, Kagan De Mario. hey welcome, you know today <coughs> is July 1, Friday here in Missouri, hello I would like to see the boomerang, I can, I can always make that happen, Mr. Kagan, you know that it's there. So I want you to take your time, take a screenshot of that, so that when you go to bed at night, you can see it all the time, all right? Now you can take a screenshot. You know how to do that with your smartphone, right? You press the little buttons on the side, and you'll hear a click, and that way forever your heart will be content looking at the boomerang in St. Charles, Missouri, in our second bedroom where I have the office. Our broadcasting room, I guess I should say. So, Selma and I say thank you and good morning. All right? Or good morning here in Missouri, anyway. I know it's got to be late at night or late in the evening where you're at. You can see the board up there. All the little white squares are people that have contacted us. Can you please tell me a Vietnam story? <laughs> uh, what would you like to hear, huh? What would you like to hear? I tell you why I'm reluctant to tell stories about Vietnam. All right, because I wasn't a Christian back then. All right, so it's like saying to a person, "Well, what was your life be like before you became a Christian?" All right, the marijuana, <laughs> so I don't do it. <laughs> Uh, well, if you don't do marijuana because of a story I say, well, you know, you're, you know, you're, you'll find out yourself. I can't, you know, just like me, you know, I was a young kid, and uh, I won't say young, well, just nuts, okay? So, <laughs> I listen to everything you say. Well, I'm telling you, you better make an appointment at the psychiatrist's office if you listen to everything I say. Hello? Because you gotta leave this world, you gotta enter into the supernatural for the Holy Spirit of God to coexist with your spirit. Huh? Yeah, but Kagan, it's all pretty vain if people don't surrender their life to Jesus and die and go in that lake of fire. See, I believe in that. I believe there is. I, I believe what Jesus said, not what I think, but I believe what, you know, there's a, uh, okay, well then, honestly, if that's so, if that's who you live for, right, if that's, if that's so, now, this isn't to belittle you, Kagan, but I can't, in 40 years, I've heard that so many times, I've had people tell me, oh, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, everything, and boy, but I go in that mission field, I say, where's everybody else at? So, the question, Kagan. <laughs> so, you, you've been confirmed. <laughs> oh, Kagan, you. <laughs> I'm going to send you that boomerang. <laughs> Kagan, please, please, don't, don't tell me you're serious. I'm serious. <laughs> okay, we got to move on, Kagan. This is the only night we need prayer. Oh, I, I need prayer. Will you please pray for me? It's the old 900 prayer request, right? I'm not, I know what <laughs> gets you going. <laughs> well, you got me going. I'm going to send you two boomerangs, all right? <laughs> oh, that, they don't call it confirmation. They call it regeneration. <laughs> That's what it's called. You'd be surprised. <clears throat> There's a whole argument about... Please... 5716 Northwest, let's Do you know there's a whole argument out there about 
being converted and regenerated. Okay? There are so many aspects. The religious people, I don't know if you looked at our website lately, but I'm putting up the 90 articles by R.A. Torrey. And these were written by 66 different authors called the Fundamentals. You'll see that I, I E R A Tory T O R R E Y R. Look up Google the Fundamentals, and there's 90 articles, and these were published. 90 articles by 60 some different authors, and these were sent to all the Protestant missionaries in the 1900s to combat what they call higher criticism. Talk about the blood of Jesus and the power and the blood of Jesus. Yes. All right. The fundamentals. So I have on my website, you'll see when you go to howtobecomeachristiantoday.com or mongnews.org or normanetker.com, you'll see the in the menu listing about the 90 articles. I have downloaded, I have all the articles there. And then I'm in the process, okay, just a minute with your serious question, please. I've downloaded those articles, all the links, and now I'm at number eight of downloading each link onto my website. These are photocopied uh, pages, so Google Translator will not read a, a print, all right? <coughs> It just reads text, you know, it's got to be readable, okay. So, okay, <laughs> we got, I'm going to finish this story, so you guys just going to wait, all right. I love you guys, but you're going to wait, all right, just a second. So this is, this is important. I know you have a question, okay. I hope you're paying for your data time, too, okay, huh? All right, now look. The, the 90 articles by the fundamentals, these 60 different authors combat the liberal theology that puts out the arguments against the inspiration of the Mosaic uh, books that Moses was involved in. And they systematically try to destroy the authenticity of the Protestant Christian Bible. And I've downloaded, now I'm on the ninth article, but I've downloaded each article and then loaded to the website and insert the link so that now each individual one you can change to 66 different languages. So now people from around the world can read the fundamentals in their language, or at least 66 of the thousands of lingos out there, all right? <clears throat> but it's very important. If you're serious about wanting to know more about Jesus, hey, hi, Charles, you're a Methodist. Well, too bad. I wouldn't tell anybody you're Methodist today. Back in the day, it had been good because Methodists were right on with Wesley, but today, they're absolute workers of iniquity. The Methodists, United Methodists, the United Methodists <coughs> follow the teaching of a guy called A. Campbell. Camp. C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. -L. This guy decided to write his own New Testament, all right? And you know what he introduced is Mr. Campbell? And the Methodist went right along in Church of Christ. That to be saved, to be spiritually born again, you have to be water baptized. If you're not water baptized, you're not saved. That's another gospel message. The only way that person will be be saved and spiritually born again with the Holy Spirit of God coexisting with you is by the blood of the Lamb Jesus. The atonement. There is no other way. That's offensive to my religion, Norm. Hello. Well, wait. And I have something for you. What? Look. Okay, you see that? That's for you this morning. I like that. Is that a neat clock or what? Whatever. <laughs> Can you see that? Is that good or what? <laughs> okay, give me the question. What's the question? All right. No, show me again. <laughs> okay, guys, come on. This is serious. 
this is spontaneous in his life. One more time. No. <laughs> <Duh! laughs> All right, you guys need help. I can see. Get some coffee. What is your stand on female to male transgender? Oh, that's a good question. Satan, yeah, Satan's got power, and there's a lot of people worship him. Honestly, I, I agree with you, man. People do hail Satan. Jesus said that Satan is the god of this world, so I'm not going to contradict Jesus like a medically implanted penis. Nah, it's got to hurt, you think? <laughs> Look, it, I have one of them. I could say something, but I'm a Christian. So they are a devil worship? Or, yeah, all the you Look, guys, you got to realize something. It's not, people don't know that Satan is God of this world. Okay, that's, that's the truth. People don't know that. I didn't know it. When I was, uh, when I was, spiritually born again I thought I was my own boss I thought I was leading my life doing my own thing making all my own decisions all of that but when I when I got converted when I was spiritually born again when I was regenerated then things my eyes open okay all right look I want to read you something all right hold on I'm gonna read you something look it says here, this is what Jesus said. So I kind of believe Jesus. So if I don't, if I don't agree with you folks out there, you'll know why. Read me Fifty Shades of Green. <laughs> Look, here's Galatians. This is in third chapter. Here's what Jesus and the apostle and evangelist say in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament about the devil in this world. But the scriptures declare that we are all prisoners of sin. So we receive God's promise of freedom only by believing in Jesus Christ. For in 1 John, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. All right. Oh, okay. So you guys know all that. You know why I know? I know that you know this. Read Leviticus. I don't have to read Leviticus, okay? You asked me about transgender, but but who's that Lucifer, please? Mm, who's that Lucifer? Okay, here, it's real simple. Can you see God? Can you see God? Please, that's yes or no. Can you see God? <gasps> Come on, it's not a trick question. Let's go. Come on. No. So, can you see Lucifer? <laughs> All right. Can you see Lucifer? That's a yes or no. Hey, Burwatsakiko Kako. Hey, hi. Can you imagine your mom calling you in the morning? Get up out of bed, cause he go well. One, two, three, four. Hello. Why don't you guys just use your name? Make it easy. Hello from Belgium. Hey. Good morning, Belgium. Can you buy me a taser? <laughs> hey, look, guys. Take a look at the map. Let me flip you here. I want you to take a look. France, everybody. Here we are. This is our periscope map. All right. You see all them white squares? That's all the people. They have come on to the 0900 prayer request time. You'll see them. And I want you to notice that our view... <laughs> oh boy, you guys need help. You know that. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Hey, Madagascar. Good. Hey, how you doing? Glad that you're here in the 0900 prayer request time. It's only about this, guys. It's not about anything else. Hey, Belize. Hey, I had a friend lived in Belize once. Hey, Belize. 
<clears throat> Belize, I know you speak English here. I have a question, Belize. Okay, you ready? Belize, you ready? Belize, can you hear me down there? Come on, talk to me. Okay, Belize. Do, are you familiar with... How old are you? I'm 97. <laughs> 70, 70, 70 years, okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. The question for Belize. Are you familiar with a group of people, Southeast Asian refugees, that live in, uh, oh shoot, it's not Belize, but it's uh, around the corner down there in uh, South America. <laughs> yes, I know. No. <laughs> Look. <laughs> oh, golly. You guys are nuts today. All right. Look. Drink your coffee. Settle down. Calm down out there in Periscope Land. Okay. Belize. The Southeast Asian refugee group of people from Laos were called the Hmong. H-M-O-N-G. Are you familiar with that group? They settled in... Uh, Hold a minute. Let me look at the map. Wait. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's where they were. All right. Sorry, guys. They, they settled in French Guyana. <laughs> all right. Well, they settled in uh, French Guyana. There's a lot of Hmong, they're all over. They're here in the United States, France, Germany, and some went to uh, French Guyana, okay? Just curious if you knew them in Belize. I realize Belize is not there, it's, you know. But anyway, it's just a question for you. Look, this is what this is about right here, okay? All right? I'm from French Guyana. I am a French guy. Hey, okay, French guy. I'm a... I'm a gringo guy, all right? Hey, hi there. I heard the Hmong have large genitals. <laughs> prayer request time. It's obvious that you need some prayer, huh? All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the website, you guys. Are you missing a cat? <laughs> you, got, you got the Friday... It's Friday. You guys are ready for the weekend, so you went batty this week at work, huh? Okay, <laughs> let's start, man. <laughs> you guys, you know, I ought to just shut this broadcast and start again, all right? You guys are nutty. All right, look, this is a serious, this is spontaneous, this is live, and God's watching, all right? All right, here we go. Let's try this again. Now, we're serious here. We're a serious group, right? We're talking about the Lord, and the Lord's watching. You know, God's got a little humor, all right? Go and talk to a prayer fund protection. Does anybody else have to do God watch me doing today? Oh, boy. All right, here we go. Let me, uh, I'm going to have to rein this in. So here we go, guys. We're going to look here. Uh, oops, wrong one. Hold on, guys. Good morning, Vietnam. Hey, there you go. Okay, one last request. All right, come on. What's the last request? What's the last request? What kind of insane statement are you going to make? Can you tell me a Vietnam story? How can you print more effective for my exam, please? Norm, can you buy me firecrackers? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you a Vietnam story, okay? You ready for this? Now, you guys are going to have to stop texting. I'll tell a little short Vietnam story. Really short, okay? Okay, now, okay, everybody stop texting, okay? Stop, stop, don't send it. Just get your little finger off the keys. Yes, it's a Vietnam story. I'll tell, okay? But you got to stop texting. All right, ready? Nam, that's right. Stop texting, ready? 
I'm not going to tell the story now that you guys quit. All right, there you go. Good. Stop. Don't press the button, you addicts. All right, here we go. Two days ago, I was in the VA hospital for uh, just a kind of Hey, get off of there, Prince. Uh, hi, Prince. You probably don't know what's going on. So, I was in the hospital, just a routine check thing, okay? And I made a statement. To this uh, uh, nurse, okay, it was a female nurse, and I made this statement to her about Vietnam. All right. Now, for you that don't know, I was not a Christian back then. I volunteered for Vietnam to help the Vietnamese people fight communist aggression. I volunteered, volunteered to go to Nam the first year. The second, the second year, my younger brother volunteered. I volunteered again to get him out. And by the time the paperwork went through, he had already been shot and wounded. Okay? So, I continued on. So, the story is this. When I was in the, the clinic here, the VA clinic, two days ago, I said to this nurse, that's a, a veteran too, but just not of the Vietnam thing. I said, if, now, I want you to understand, I'm, I, back then I was not a Christian. I became a Christian when I was 28. And this is when I was 19 and 20 in Vietnam, okay? Today I'm 70, okay? My wife Selma, 16, 60 what? 69 okay so I said to this person in the hospital two days ago at the veterans hospital I said if I would have known how United States military veterans are treated today in the VA hospitals and I'm talking about me been treated in the veterans hospital if I knew how I would have been treated in the future, I would never have volunteered to go to Vietnam. That's my Vietnam story. <clears throat> Norm, do you have genitals? Alright guys, here we go. <clears throat> this is the 0900 prayer request time, alright? So, Okay, great. Alright, so, look guys, it's about time for you guys all to check out. You only come here for about 30, 40 seconds. You, you cannot find an elephant dancing on a tulip. So you will go off into, into Periscope, into Cyber World, trying to find some weird veto, veto, veto? video of something going on all right but this is really what it's about guys you guys are just about like i was you are a follower and not a christian guess it doesn't matter to you you are a follower not a christian christian not a christian a follower duh you lost me there but anyway i had a personal experience with christ yes i've been spiritually born again the Holy Spirit of God coexists with my spirit. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? A person asked me to share about the blood of Jesus Christ and what does it mean? Okay, it's a two-part thing. You want to hear it? <laughs> I know you're just jumping up and down saying, yeah, man, tell us, tell us. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A lot of, here's the big thing that, uh, as you know, on our little map over there, all my little hearts on the global periscope map the biggest question that the Muslims have is they they have it's been drummed in their head just like the Roman Catholics the Southern Baptists not in they believe that Jesus was just a, a prophet and not a God and they'll go <clears throat> they'll rant and rave about that forever all right the part about Jesus Christ and the blood and why is it important about him dying on a cross 
the human Jesus was a sacrifice. Okay, I know it sounds gross to us in this 2016, but the fact remains at that time, animal sacrifices were made to God to appease God. But you couldn't use just any old animal. You had to have the best of the lot. Jesus had to be a perfect offering. So it couldn't be a human because humans are born in sin. Original sin since Adam and Eve. So, here this perfect, sinless God, man, Jesus. He's born of a sinful woman conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. He lived a life for 30 years, never committed any sin, thought, word, or deed. He dies. His blood is shed. He's the perfect sacrifice. That's the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, that's one side of it. And that's all generally people understand about it. Alright? Now here's the second part that people don't understand so well. And it's quite clear. But our phony Protestant Denominational churches in the United States, Australia, Europe, Asia, and Southeast Asia will not tell the truth, okay? And it's this. When Jesus, when the human man Jesus died, the God part of Jesus took upon himself the sin, the punishment for sins. Every sin has a punishment. Every crime has a punishment. All that punishment, that's called the wrath of God against sin. All that punishment from the past, that's from Adam to Noah, Noah to Jesus, all the sin of the present, or at that time, Jesus' time, and then all the future sins. And that includes us now and until God descends from heaven with the heavenly city. Okay, that's what the story of the Bible says is going to happen. All right, but Jesus is going to return before that. But, all right, so the God part of Jesus had to take the punishment for the sins of the world, past, present, and future. That's called the wrath of God. This is the God part where you read that Jesus said to the Father when he's hanging on the cross, Why have thou forsaken me? In that moment, all that punishment was placed on the God-man. And this God-man descended to the grave, and this God-man raised himself up out of death. That allows us, the Christian, when you become spiritually born again, you go through that same death, burial, and resurrection. In a twinkling of an eye, when you meet God's requirements, and here's God's requirement, understanding grace, justification, and repentance, you are cleansed clean of all your sins. You're loved and forgiven. All things become new, and all things are passed away. The Holy Spirit of God physically comes inside your human body and coexists with your spirit. That's when you know you're spiritually born again. <clears throat> the trouble is many people go to church and they're good, moral, decent people, but they've not been spiritually born again because they don't know that this is the cornerstone, grace, justification, and repentance. You have to meet God's requirement to become a Christian. You can't say, well, I want God to be like this. I want Him to accept everybody and every kind of lifestyle that they do. That's my kind of God. So you go join a denomination, Protestant denomination, Presbyterian, Methodist, Church of Christ, Pentecostal, Charismatic, Messianic, go join the Amish, live a couple hundred years in the past. What ridiculous stuff. It's like a smorgasbord. You go out there and pick and choose anything you want. All right? Well, that's not God. Okay? All right. This is the 0900 prayer request time. I hope that answers your question about the blood of Jesus Christ. All right? All right. Today is about you talking to God, asking God for help in your life. Amen? So, who's coming up first? I see you got a couple of people looking. I'm trying to bring up my thing here for you guys. Who's going to be the first to ask for prayer, huh? Will your ego allow you... 
and that's all it is. You guys, you women, it's the same thing. I know we call ega, and call man you call ego, and then woman ega. All right, here we go. I'm gonna flip you around. And take a look at this. All right, here we go. This is it. <coughs> this is in English, of course, and you can read that. All right. And this tells who we are, Selma Broadcast, that's my wife, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday, 11 o'clock Central Standard Time here in Missouri. Alright, this tells who we are, where we're at, what we're about. Alright. I'm uh, the founder of LAM. And that's uh, way back in 78, before you guys, most of you were born, all right? Isn't that something? Wow. <coughs> Five missionary tours in Southeast Asia. First missionaries up to this Monk Hill Tribe village in the Himalayan mountains. It was a drug-infested communist bandit area called the Golden Triangle. Those people had never seen a white person and never heard the name of Jesus. Today... That place is predominantly a Christian village. <coughs> Spiritually born again believers. <coughs> they only believe in one book, not some church doctrine. <coughs> the Old Testament is the beginning. There's only one rule and guide for all spiritually born-again believers today, and that's the New Testament, the words of Jesus, the apostles, and the evangelists, no other. There are no church doctrines. There are no religious doctrines equal to the Bible. None. Zero. There's only one book. The Protestant Christian Bible is the only divine inspired book from God to man, and only the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, is the rule and guide for today. No church doctrine. No rural church doctrine. No mega church doctrine. No evangelist. No pope. No nothing. Nobody. Nowhere. No how. The only truth to be followed are the words of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, in the Protestant Christian Bible. And there, this final paragraph sums it up. All right. As you can see. All right. <coughs> this is the 0900 prayer request time. All right. It's about you guys out there praying. It's, it's not about me. It's about you talking to God, asking God for help in your life. He's, he's, hey, look, the creator of the world created us in his image. He loves us, all right? And he wants us redeemed and coming back to him, all right? Amen. God is real. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. It's not for tomorrow, next day, or some other time. But it's today. <clears throat> Here it is, folks. How to become a Christian today.com. That's our website. We're on Twitter, Instagram. I post on Instagram every day. All right? And you can see it on Facebook, too. Right. Today is an acceptable day of salvation. Amen? We're in a time of grace right now. The grace of God is grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor to all people. All six or seven billion people on the planet. That's grace is for all the ISIS people, for the Buddhists, for the Muslim, the Roman Catholic, the religious Protestants, the religious Christians, Lutherans, Presbyterians, the Amish, Mennonite. That grace is for all. You understand? 
people die and go to hell because of what? Because of what they do? No. They go to hell because they reject the words of Jesus in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. Or they add to and create their own words and their own meanings and making God the way they want it to mean. They pick and choose. Why don't you read this? This is really revealing. You see that? Whosoever is ashamed of me, now get this next part, and of my words. Well, I don't, you got people that read the New Testament and say, well, I don't believe that's for today. I don't accept that. I don't think that's right. I like the view my church has about that. I think my church is correct. I think I believe that way. I want my God to include everyone, and it doesn't make any difference what kind of life they lead. God loves us, and God wants us to accept everybody in any old way. And no, our church doesn't say anything about hell because we, our church, doesn't believe in hell. That's a seven-day Adventist. They don't believe in there's a hell. This is this Dr. Ben Carson guy you hear on TV in the politics in the United States. He's a seven-day Adventist. They don't believe in hell. <laughs> I mean, you guys, most people are clueless about that. Most people don't realize the Southern Baptists are in the predestination. They believe that they were selected by God before they were born to go to heaven. Everybody else is going to hell. That's Billy Graham. He states on YouTube video. Check it out. It's right there, Billy Graham and... Uh, that other guy's with, what's his name, can't remember. But anyway, you check it out, you'll see it. All right. It's, you just, but predestination is a devil doctrine. That's a Southern Baptist. The Roman Catholics are so far off the road, they're down the ditch. They're, they even fell out of the ditch. The Catholic and their goofy doctrines, praying to dead people, dead bones, making people gods and pray. Uh, just rubbish. It's this meaningless stuff. Meaningless. It gets you nowhere except this religious humble jumbo confusion. Don't know what to do. And if you oppose anything I say, well, I'll kill you and God's going to give me a blessing for doing it. You can look at history, and I've been saying this for a long time. Everybody's killing everybody in the name of God. The Americans do it. Everybody does it. It's just, there's no exception. We're an evil people. And the only people that set free from that are the ones that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus. You understand? You got you got to be regenerate. You got to have the Holy Spirit of God in you, coexisting with you, and you have to be a new person in Christ to be able to walk amidst the evil that's upon this earth right now. If you don't have the power of God walking within you right now in your life, if you're not spiritually born again the power of evil will overrun you. You cannot resist the devil by your own strength. But the Holy Spirit of God enables you because the grace of God is in your life and grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor. And that grace enables you to walk all over that devil. But without that grace and try to do it in your own strength, you'll get knocked down in a heartbeat. I've been involved in, in demonic uh, uh, deliverance, and uh, let me tell you something. If you don't, people people think that demons aren't real, they're as real as real can be, and they will destroy and control a person's life. And but you know, a lot of people won't give it up. All right. There's something about evil. Once a person begins going down that evil track, it becomes part of their character. And you hear people say, oh, he's always been like that. All right, let's say it's about some mean, vicious person. They'll say, oh, yeah, he was always like that. No, he wasn't always like that. Amen. You got to have the power. But the power of God is only received by faith, and that's by grace. It's a gift from God. I, look at this. 
Can you read that sign there? Let's take a look here. Can you see that? It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not from yourself. It is the gift of God, Ephesians 2. It, it's not from yourself. It's the gift from God. All right? There's no way that you can do anything. It's just by God's grace. And if you're not walking with the Lord Jesus, if you're involved in a church group, then more than likely you're not serving the Lord. Okay? All right? Amen. Most people that belong to a church have their roots in that church, in those people, in that pastor. You'll hear people say, I love my pastor. I love my church family. This is my church. And if you say anything against that church, if you cause a problem in that church, they'll run you out on a rail in the name of Jesus. If you don't agree with the clique in that church, you're out of there. They sing that Ray Charles song to you. Hit the road, Jack. Because the churches today in America... Australia, Europe, Asia, and Southeast Asia are man-created religious doctrines. And they carve out, substitute their own opinion for the words of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. They interpret it the way they want their God to be like. And that's today. Well, they're really not church people. They're just lost religionists. The church are only the people that are spiritually born again. Christ being the head of that church. I don't advise people to go to a, a so-called Christian church, Protestant Christian church in the U.S., Australia, Europe, Asia, or Southeast Asia. All right? Lost religions. Because once you go into a church house, you sit there and listen to a half stranger explain to you what God's saying. And then you suppose that that means you, and, you're and then you start listening to this man's interpretation. And before long, you're going to seminars, you're involved, you're doing everything. And miss God a thousand percent because you, as an individual... That's right. Gets in your spirit. You as an individual have to read the New Testamental yourself. You have to read the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, the truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. You have to read. You have to understand. Not me explaining it to you or some preacher man explaining it to you. And you can say, oh, yeah, that missionary Norman, he said this, now I, oh, now I understand. Oh, yeah, that missionary Norman said, oh, that's wrong, I shouldn't do that. Oh, that's great. Oh, missionary Norman said, this is the right way to think about that. Oh, I agree with missionary Norman. You know what's missing? Thus saith the Lord in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. You have to read, you have to understand. There's going to be people that stand before Jesus and say, That's right, Luke 12, 12, the Holy Spirit shall teach you and bring all things to your remembrance. Not me. If you listen to me, you're going to end up in a ditch. If you listen to a preacher, man, you're going to end up in a ditch. <laughs> you can't do it. I know the scripture is saying this and saying that, but let me tell you something. Those are spiritually born again people reading about in the New Testament. That's not the current state of the church in the United States, Australia, Europe, Asia, and Southeast Asia in 2016. It is an absolute scam and joke what's going on in our churches, what they call churches. Yes, that's all it is, blind leading the blind. Okay. All right, getting off track here. Same, same old thing I've been saying for 40 years, right? 
So why does God have me on Periscope? Because of this. Prayer. People don't understand the simplest thing about prayer. Prayer is only talking to God. You don't have to do, do some... Uh, you don't have to do nothing except open your mouth and talk. Hello, God. How are you today? You don't have to be a super pious person. You can be carefree, ordinary, normal, go for a walk and say something like this. God, please, I think you're real. Can you help me to understand? I'm asking in Jesus' name. Simple as that. Help me to understand, Lord. I just don't get it, God. I'm a dummy. Help me to understand. Please, God, if you're real out there, and I think you are, please help me to understand. That's absolutely. Talking is talking. Praying is talking. And it's so easy, so basic, so fundamental. And here's the thing. That praying to God is... When you pray, bonjour. Hey, hi, friends. When you pray and you ask in Jesus' name, what's that? You're truly, you're truly a Christian. Yeah. When you pray and you ask God in Jesus' name about anything, God's going to answer you. That's a guarantee. I will say it again. Anything you ask God, sincerely, and you believe it, and you ask in the name of Jesus, God's Son, <laughs> God's going to answer your prayer. Anything. I know you don't. <laughs> you're... you're you're with millions of people, billions of people believe the same way. No, there's no strings attached. There's no strings attached to this thing about prayer. You don't do nothing. All you got to do is ask God in Jesus' name. It makes no difference what kind of life God came into this world to save the world. All right? So... You hardly can't have a slate clean, <laughs> okay? God will, look, when you pray, it's about asking God, talking to God. I'll give you an example. Let's say that you, uh, let's say that I had this lady here. I guess maybe she's going now. She just made a comment, I don't believe in God. All right? So let's say that you, this, this gal that was just there. No, you don't have to do that. Look, friend, you, you, I know what you're saying. I know your heart's right in the right direction, but you don't need to do anything. Once you start putting conditions on things, it steps into legalism. You can't get this, not unless you do this. You got to stay away from that. All right? That's legalistic. All right? Grace is free, freely given. And it's freely given to the vile, wretched sinners. And what? They can pray. There's no condition to praying. None. Zero. Zero. Anybody in any state of mind, no matter if they're neck deep in sin, they can still reach out and call out to God. All right? <clears throat> All right? Amen. Great. It's called grace. Look, look. Look, I know you're a scripture guy, and you know the scripture. But you, you got to, you look over, look, now look. I want you to look at this again. It, it, for, this is a King James Version. For it is by grace. God's power, strength, love, and favor to all people. It is by grace you, that's in Periscope land, have been saved by grace. Through faith, faith in Jesus, your justification, and this not from yourself, 
That means you didn't do anything. It is the gift of God. What is the gift of God? The faith to be saved by grace. If God didn't help you, you couldn't do nothing. There's no way you can understand God. He's incomprehensible. The only way we know anything about God is through grace. God condescends down to us to help us to understand about Him. We couldn't get it. We would, know, we would be all atheists. But really, atheist is not an atheist. Atheist knows there's a God and decides he doesn't want to believe. So that's kind of a, a misnomer. <laughs> Free gift, right. He gave us a measure of faith. Wow. He gave us all a measure of faith. Well, you got to be careful how you make that statement. I know that uh, I used to be on that line. Uh, it gives us all a measure of faith. But you can't do that. You can't say that. Because every human born is in sin, damnable sin, all right? All right? There's no measure of faith. It's taken out of context or just truly misunderstood. All people born in sin and without regeneration, they're lost, all right? So God saw that that was going to happen. He sent Christ Jesus to save the world. All right? All right? That is how he decided to do it, by grace, faith, and this not by yourself, but from God. Not to a select group of people. He didn't give somebody a measure of faith to believe in him. No. It was grace upon all of the world. Okay? Uh, let me read you something here. This is cool. Let me read you this. Let me find this. Hold on a second. I got it right here somewhere in this mess here. <coughs> Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. First Peter, that was John 3, 1 Peter 1, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever, and mark. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first command. And Luke 10, and he answered, And thy neighbor as thyself. <coughs> that whosoever, this is in John 3 again, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Who shall I ever believe? He didn't give people measures of faith. Who? Okay. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever. I like your teaching. Can you pray for me now? Uh, I'm sorry I didn't catch it. Okay. But let, let me finish here. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he believeth not in the name of the only begotten Son. So there's no measure of faith. The, the plan of salvation is universal to the whole world. All seven billion. I like your teaching. Can you pray for me now? I will agree with. Well, what would you want prayer about? That would be the question. And then, all right, and I have, I have some questions for you. If you don't mind me asking, all right? And maybe you know the questions I'm going to ask before. <laughs> I don't know if you got time here on the internet or not. You got time or not? You got to get going. Job and healing. You want Charles? Charles V. 
job in healing. Okay, Charles, I have some questions for you. You ready for it? Just a quick thing, okay. You got you got the time, Charles? This will take about five minutes. You got that much time or you gotta get rolling? Is that a yes or no, Charles? B. You got the time, Charles? Okay. I want you to tell me the first, what is the meaning of grace? I believe you know, but just, okay. This is a double check. All right. What's the meaning of grace? It, briefly, I know you're at a disadvantage because I can talk and you got to do, 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 do. Uh, IDK. I don't know what IDK means. Sorry, I'm not up on my internet slang, all right? The phonetic language, I'm probably never going to learn it. I've dealt with languages so much, I don't care to learn another one. All right. Grace. Charles, what do you think that means? Grace. Briefly. Grace is God's mercy. He paid it off. Okay. 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 All right. Hold on a minute. Okay, second question. Justification. What does justification mean to you, Charles? Justification. Justified by his blood. Okay. Okay, and the last one, Charles, as you probably know, what's repentance mean? Repentance. Hey, hi there. Uh, nothing is real. Everything's an illusion. Hey, is that Kenya? I can't, the, your, the print is so small on this screen. Mm. Yeah, I know it's an illusion. We deal with, uh, I'm French. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you're, <laughs> I'm Americano. <laughs> All right, this is the 0900 prayer request time. And uh, this is what we're about here, okay? Asking God to forgive and then turn away from. Okay. All right. Charles, I, I, I want to share some stuff with you, but first I want to ask, why 
haven't your prayers, how do you know there is a God? Uh, how do I know there is a God? Okay. All right, there's your, there's your answer. Okay, what can I say? A lot of people believe in God and a lot of people don't. So you're in the mix, man. That's where science comes in. Oh, hey, I have a, a Kenya, Kenya, is that, I'm not sure if I'm getting the name pronounced correctly. Let me tell you about science. Back about uh, 400 years ago, science, you know what science said? The world was flat and science was with the local government then and you know what happened? They took the fellow that said the world was round and they tied him to a stake and burnt him up. Today, science in the United States of America, the department, okay, today, 2016, the DOJ, Department of Justice, was submitted a request to bring criminal charges of how they could bring charges against people who denied in climate change. That's science. Science says you come from a monkey or a mud pit. You're a mud pit slither or you're a sloth dropped out of a tree. You understand? That's science. Okay? I don't have an issue with it because I deal with people that are from various ideas. Okay? I have people say they don't believe in God, but I ask them, well, how do you know there's a God not to believe in? Okay? Okay, Charles, back to you. Why do you think, Charles, that your prayers aren't answered? You ask for prayer, but why do you think they're not being answered now? I might, might have lost you there, Charles. Hope you'll come back on. This is the 0900 prayer request time. All right? It's about you guys believing, trusting, and believing in God. Amen. My name is Missionary Norman Edgar. All right, Charles, you back with me? Why do you think your prayers have not been answered? If that's you, oh, looks like we're lost again. All right. All right. This is the 0900 prayer request time. All right. Let's take a look here. I'm going to flip the screen. You can read about who we are. All right. All right. This is on our website. This is our web page here, as you can see. All right. <coughs> this is who we are. People contact us all over. As you can see, here's our Periscope global map. And it's showing people that have contact. Those white squares are people that have contacted us. There's our view count and heart count right there. Okay. And this explains who we are right here. All right. As you can see, right here. All right. This explains who we are. We can translate this into many languages. All right. And this, this kind of sets the stage for who we are and what we are about, okay? This is the 0900 prayer request time. And what you're looking at is a brief bio of LAM. This is the organization, non for profit organization that I formed in 1978. And it's to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's unique on our Articles of Incorporation papers, I have one sentence only. Our purpose is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. No other. No church doctrine, no nothing, and that's it. 
you're looking at a brief bio of us and so this is from our website and I'm able to show this because we have a lot of people that come on Periscope as you can see when you look at our map here those little white squares are people that have contacted us and you can see we have had 120 or 12,000 views 198,000 hearts all right but people contact us all the time and they're asking about prayer asking things because a lot of people have no idea about God and the truth about becoming a Christian they're confused with the ideas about this church that's here in the United States, the church that's in Europe, the Church of England that is, and all the various denominations that are spread out around the world, Australia, Europe, Asia, and Southeast Asia. And most of these organizations are corrupted, false teachers, all right? That is the problem with today. They have created their own doctrines. They believe what they want to believe. They make their God the way they want their God to be like. They do it all day, every day, all the time. The Protestant Christian religionists are not interested in you not going to hell. They're interested in continuing their community-based 101 psychology programs for they feel that that's what it's really about. It's not about death, hell, and salvation. They believe it's about community help organizations. So today, the 0900 prayer request is for a general call to the people to pray to God, not to any old God, but to the God of the Protestant Christian Bible. The God that's represented in the New Testament by Jesus, the Apostle Evangelist. That's the only true church. The church are the people that are spiritually born again. You understand? Jesus is the head of that church. These Protestant denominations that you see all over Europe, Australia, Asia, and Southeast Asia, these are created doctrines of men. They put their own spin on how they want their God to be like. It's not the truth. It's not real. And the, the people of the world look at that and they say, oh, well, we're supposed to be good people, and being a good people, you got to go to a church, right? Because it's ingrained in people that you just got to be good. You got to change your life. People don't understand that to be good in God's eyes, you have to be regenerated by the blood of Jesus Christ. They don't understand the salvation message because the salvation message is not taught in churches today. You come as you are, do as you please. Here's we want this group of people. It's okay. Whatever lifestyle you lead, it's okay. Come on in. Do this. You could care less. They got people, man, that just tell you jokes to get you to come in the door. They no more care if you're going to die and go to hell than a man in the moon. They don't care about that because that's not their message. You understand? It's a 101 psychology inclusive. Let's say everybody in. They take the words of Jesus and throw them out the door. They don't, or they interpret and substitute their own brand of what they think is right. Today, all spiritually born again people... You can't change the words of Jesus and his intentions. You have to read and you have to understand. That's, that's how you're held accountable. You can't listen to me and you can't listen to somebody else. You're going to read the words of Jesus. You're going to understand. You're going to decide. Well, he says to love everybody and your neighbor too. Love God with all your mind, heart, and soul. But... I got my own life to lead. I got my kids, my wife, my job, my business. Oh, I, oh, 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 oh. But it says to love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. Well, maybe when I get old. No, I can't do it now. I got too much on the plate. That's when you're held accountable. You understand? Love your neighbor and you say some hateful thing about some group of people. 
If you don't have the love in your heart to lead people away from the eternal hellfire, you're not spiritually born again. The whole thing about God and Christ is about the devil and God. Jesus came to save mankind. Save them from what? Save them from dying and going to the hell. God gives grace. His grace is the power to withstand against sin. Without grace, you're, you're doomed. All right? This is the old 900 prayer request. It's about praying and asking God for help in your life. It's not about anything else. I don't want you to join a church. If you join a church, you'll probably end up in hell anyway. All right? Don't stay away from them churches. They're phony. They're no more interested in your salvation than a man. Most of them don't even talk about it. They talk a one-on-one -on -one psychology about how to get along with that old cranky neighbor or something. I remember one time down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and uh, one day I went to a drive-in, you know, a drive-through bank. And so this particular bank had the cashier at the little window there, and you could talk to her, right? And she made some kind of comment about religion or something or the other, and I made a statement, and she uh, she upbraided me across that microphone. All right, so I thought it was kind of unusual that she would, but, you know, such is life. Well, do you know what happened? That girl came to my house later, it was a couple of weeks later, she brought a cake. A cake. She baked a cake. <laughs> All right. She had a cake, and she wanted to give me that cake because she didn't want me to be upset with her for her to tell me what she thought was the truth. And of course, she was wrong, but I didn't say anything. I just let her talk. But the, here's the point of the story. The particular church group that she, that she was involved with, this was their answer to everything. Instead of explaining the truth about the gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ, which they didn't know, it was, be their friend. <laughs> you, being somebody's friend isn't going to get it. Jesus said to go teach and make disciples. You have to understand. Understand what? This right here. Grace, justification, and repentance. This is the cornerstone of, of understanding the gospel message. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor to all people, all six or seven billion people on this planet right now. God is incomprehensible. God condescends down to us to explain to us about Him. If God didn't help us, we, we would never know anything about God. We'd be just like little ants bumping around and following each other around in circles. But this great grace of God, God's power, strength, love, and favor to all people, His grace condescends down to us, enabling us to begin to understand about God, to begin to understand how God created the world through the Protestant Christian Bible truths of the Old Testament. Being fulfilled completely, the full revelation of God is given to us through the Christ Jesus in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. Justification, we're justified by the blood of the Lamb. We're justified by Jesus alone to return to God. We're reconciled to God by His blood sacrifice of His innocent body being suffered, bruised, beaten, scourged, crucified. His sinless life was, His human body was an offering to God. The God part of Jesus took upon himself the wrath of God for all the sins of past, present, and future was placed on the God part of Jesus. He descended into hell and arose by his own power for he was God. That's what happens when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. He gives you the resurrection power. When you're spiritually born again, the Holy Spirit of God coexists with you inside your human body. That gives you God's power, grace, love, and favor to all people. And you don't see people as evil and bad. You see people that need to know about Jesus. And if they don't, they're going to go to that lake of fire. 
and the, God's love is shed abroad in the saints of God because the saints of God doesn't want to see anybody go to hell. If you meet a Christian and says, well, that guy ought to go to hell for him, what he did, let me tell you, he's not spiritually born again. God sent Jesus to save this pathetic world, not to condemn it. That's his words. He sent Jesus to save, not to condemn. Amen? Repentance means to turn your life to the teachings of Jesus. You don't... A lot of people think repentance means, oh, just stop sinning, drinking, drugging, sexing. Not at all, folks. If you're going to become a Christian, of course you're going to stop doing that. But repentance means to turn your life to and obey the teachings of the New Testament of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. Simple as that. Alright? It's just that simple. You have to agree to grace. You have to agree to justification. You have to agree to repentance before you can become spiritually born again. That means you have to understand the gospel message. Once you understand it, you have to agree to, yes, it's by God's grace I understand. Yes, I understand the only way I can be reconciled is through Jesus. Yes, I understand that I have to obey the teachings of Jesus as I understand them and read them. Not what some preacher man says, not what some church says, but you or you alone. When you agree to these three, then the final step, this is important, you have to give up the right to yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. When you do that, in a twinkling of an eye, the Holy Spirit of God will recreate within you a new person in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit of God will coexist with you. You become a new person in Christ. And deciding. There's no 99.9% .9 Christian. It's either all or nothing. And that's where the rubber hits the road, folks. You run to that church house and play that game of being a religionist, you're only fooling yourself. And you're really not fooling yourself because you know down deep it's you're just you're faking. The preacher man won't tell you the truth because the preacher man don't know the truth. He's a product of his own lousy environment that he chooses to stay in. Instead of believing the word of God, he'll stay in his nice, soft, comfy job. You take away the salaries of these preacher men, they, they're gone. Most of them are charlatans and the only reason they're there is for the money. They become comfortable in their lifestyle. I listened to one the other day, he said he'd been on 50, 5-0, 50 some cruises as a pastor. He, he thought it was a great thing. And I, I'm thinking all the people in the world suffering and dying and hunger and clothes and nothing to eat and their pathetic world situation. And this guy's bragging about how he'd been on 50 cruises and have seminars on cruises and eating till they're obese and everything. I just can't, get, I, I just can't wrap my head around that kind of religion. But there's people in those church houses every week. Love it because they're the same way. They're no more serving Jesus Christ. It's a religion just like Islam, Roman Catholics, Hindus, Buddhists, Messianics. They're all the same. They're meaningless religions. You have to be spiritually born again. And until that time, everyone that, that says, oh, I'm going to believe Jesus. Now look, look, I want, I want to show you something. You see this? Look what Jesus said. Who, whosoever is ashamed of me, right, that's of Jesus, or of his words. If you're ashamed of his words, in other words, 
if you refuse to obey the plain, simple truths of Jesus in the Protestant Christian Bible, Jesus will be ashamed of you. That's what that means. If you're ashamed of Jesus and His words, that's the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus the Apostle and Evangelist, if you're ashamed of those words and refuse to believe them and refuse to stand up to them because your little church group doesn't believe this or that or put their own spin, their own interpretation that contradicts the words of Jesus the Apostle and Evangelist, in judgment, God's going to be ashamed of you and you're going to hell. That's what that means. You're ashamed of his words. That means if you won't stand for Jesus, you're no more a Christian you're no more than a man in the moon. But you walk into any of these churches, you name them off, you let your little fingers do the walking in the yellow pages, and you'll see there's a hundred, there's four thousand now, four estimated, four thousand different religions. All right? You want to, let me show you something here. Let me show you something. Hold on. Let me show you. Let me find it here. Got to admit the stuff here. Here we are. Here we are. Here it is. You want to see a list of phony Christian church organizations? Go to this right here. Go to this website. Watchtower.org Watch Power. I'm sorry, watch me. So I watched that Jehovah Witness. Wow, praise God. Don't go there. <laughs> That's an evil, demonic place. Watchmen.org. Sorry about that. Watchmen.org. They got line after line of evil. Alright? God's in the business to save people. And the only way you're going to get saved is when you hear the true gospel message preached. And that's, you, you won't hear that today. Because people today are not interested in salvation. Today's Protestant denominational churches are interested in one thing. Alright? And that is about money. No more, no less. This is the 0900 prayer request. My name is Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Been one for 40 years. Five missionary tours in the Southeast Asia, seven years into Mexico. In Mexico, they were cutting people's heads off in the town I was in. Hanging body parts <coughs> off the bridges. Why? Because people were posting on Facebook or YouTube negative things about the Zetas and cartels. All right? This thing about Jesus and praying to God is real. Real. Anyone can call on the name of the Lord. Anyone can pray. Anyone can ask God for prayer. You do not have to be some super pious person to hear from God. God sent Jesus into the sinful world to save the world. So the door of communication is open because of God's grace, His power, strength, love, and favor to all people. Through grace. Look, here's what, look, I've been showing this little, here's a little scripture. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, faith in Jesus, and this not from yourself, it is the gift of God. For you to believe in Jesus, it's a gift by grace. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor. Grace. There's no strings attached. God's grace enables you to pray to God. It makes no difference what, what state you're in. You can be this, up to your eyeballs in sin. Grace allows you to call on the name of the Lord. God sent Jesus to save. Save who? The righteous? No, he saved the world. All right? God is our imagination. Well, okay. 
Our consciousness. Okay. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> of course, you're wrong, but it's okay. You're going to say it anyway. This is the 0900 prayer request time. All right. It's about you talking to God. Hello, you know Russian language? Hello, hello, you know. Wrong why? Ah, well, okay. Let me, uh, all right. God is inside of us. Oh, okay. I'm glad that you think that, okay? All right. Okay. All right. All right, look. Hey, I'm going to show you something there, Russia. What do I think I am? All right. Well, praise the Lord. Hold on there. I'm going to get it. Hold on, Russia. Don't run away. There we go. Finally. Praise the Lord. All right, Russia. Hang in there. I want to show you something. Hey, 1 Corinthians 3.16, okay. All right, uh, just a second. I got somebody from Russia. I want them to read this, okay? Uh, okay, Russia, this is for you. This is an introduction. And let me change this to Spanish, okay? I mean, not to, to Russian. So hold on, Russia. All right, Russia, here we go. This is for you, Russia. Uh, let me drop this off. All right. Uh, God can do whatever he wants. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't agree with that. It's, you're talking about with humans, right? All right. This is what you're looking at. This is in Russia, and this is a bio of who we are and this helps the Russians those that speak Russian all right Ulio Ulio Sabira Sabira know about God okay God can do anything he wants yes God can do anything he wants yes he can that's right he does everything he says he's going to do Right. God's going to do everything he said he was going to do. So what's inside us can do what it wants. Imagination, yes. The scripture is, is very clear about our vain imaginations that we, that are spiritually born again, have to bring them under control. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So, why do you keep throwing one scripture out there? 1 Corinthians 3.16 God is not inside all of people. You have to be spiritually born again as Jesus said. That's when the Holy Spirit of God coexists with the human. The spiritual birth happens. When a person understands salvation. When a person agrees to grace, justification, and repentance. Hey, there's Kenya back. All right. All right. Let's just read this First Corinthians three sixteen exactly. Should I read it in context or out of context? Should I read it in context or out of context? Okay. Let's start at verse 10. According to the grace 
of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, thereupon he shall receive a war. reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life, or death, or things present. All things are things to come. All are yours, and ye are Christ and Christ is God. Now, reading that in context, you have to be in Christ. Pretty simple. You have to be spiritually born again. And what he's talking about is the grace of God is available to all human beings. Grace, God's power, strength. Navel Goodart. No, I, he's probably a false teacher. It's obvious that you're a disciple of his because of your lack of wanting. The obvious would be helpful. No, it wouldn't be helpful for me. I've, I've listened to what you have said on Periscope right now, and I can tell you, you are an easily deceived person, okay? You know why? The oldest trick, yeah, Nebel Gordon, the oldest trick of the devil is this, to take the uninformed and the gullible and put one verse of scripture before them and build a doctrine around one verse of scripture taken completely out of context like you have tried to imply here on Periscope. Okay? All right. This is the 0900 prayer request time. Okay? This is about you asking for prayer to receive from God. God saying in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle, and the Evangelist, that if you ask God anything in Jesus' name, He's going to answer you. Anything. Sinner, saint, or in between. It doesn't make any difference. God does not put any restrictions on it. This great grace of God, the grace of God is this. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor to all people. All six or seven billion people on this planet. All people today are free of sin, guilt, and condemnation through Jesus Christ. The fact remains the world doesn't know that. 
that's the point of the great gospel commission and calling of the spiritually born again believers to go forth, teach, and make disciples. Not this phony Protestant religionist doctrines that that are permeate in the U.S., Europe, Australia, Asia, and Southeast Asia. It's not the true gospel message. The gospel message of salvation, the cornerstone of all of it is this. Grace, God's power, strength, and love and favor to all people. Justification through Jesus. Don't you know yourself a God's temple and God's spirit dwelleth in your midst? You're taking it completely out of context. That applies only to spiritually born-again people. <laughs> Duh! Repentance means to turn your life to obedience to the teachings of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. Okay? <laughs> Today is the 0900 prayer request. Okay? You're on this Periscope site not to argue with me. You're here O900 prayer request. It's about praying and asking God for help in your life. If you want to if you want to argue about you think God's in everybody and everything is good then you need to hit that little red button on your smartphone and start broadcasting and tell all the world your version of things, okay? <coughs> all right? And you can advertise your teachers on your... You hit that little red button on your phone and you start broadcasting. You tell the world about your YouTube guys, okay? This is the 0900 prayer request. This is about you out there in Periscope land asking God for prayer. You don't have to ask me because it's not about me. It's about you talking to God. When you're a quiet, quiet place of your own choosing, of your own time, you pray, you talk to God, you ask in the name of Jesus. And God's going to answer your prayer. It makes no difference if you're up to your eyeballs in sin. Or if you think you're some righteous, holy person and know the scripture, it doesn't make any difference. God's going to answer your prayer. It doesn't. He sent Jesus to save the sinful world. All right? <clears throat> and that's what it's about. God's in the saving business. He's not in the condemning business or the arguing business. It's about you praying and talking to God. Praying is talking talking to God. How do you talk to God? Hello? Hello, God. How are you today? God, help me to understand what you're about. Help me, God. I'm asking in the name of Jesus. Be sincere. Talk to him. He'll answer you. Don't think that God's going to leave you in the lurch and you're not going to know anything. You ask sincerely in the name of Jesus, God, anything, anything that's in your heart, you ask him and believe that God's going to give you an answer. You understand? He'll do that because he's God. He's, he doesn't have to back down or, or be afraid of answering you or talking to you or communicating with you. He made you. He can, he can communicate with you any way he so desires. He, God, said, ask me anything in the name of Jesus and I'll do it. What? Well, knock on his door. Seek and you shall find. All right? But if you don't seek, if you don't ask, if you don't knock, if you don't believe, you're not going to hear anything. The vain imaginations of your own mind will take you into fairyland. You'll never, you'll just go around in circles spiritually. You'll run from one uh, religious fanatic to another. You'll never hear anything. You'll be like the wave of the sea going back to and fro every which way but loose. When you pray, pray, ask God. God, in the name of Jesus, say, God, help me to understand. God, help me to receive your words in the name of Jesus. God's going to speak to you. All right? Be prepared to hear from God. He, and he'll do it in a multitude of ways. 
All right? Don't try to put God in a box that He's got to answer the way you want. He's going to answer you. And most of the time, it's a vain prayer in that it's all about me. Help me get more of this, this, or that, whatever. All right? God is a loving, caring God. He wants to help you in your life. That's why he sent Jesus, to save the world, not to condemn the world, to save the world. He's surely going to help you in your life. That's what it's all about. Amen. This is the old 900 prayer request. All right? It's about you believing and talking to God. It's not about anything else. Hey, uh, Mom. All right, uh, I'm going to need to do something that. The air is blowing that right in on me now. So, all right, okay. All right, folks, we got to go. And so I'll see you tomorrow, 9 o'clock.